Up. Sussex. Sure, I'll just uh Boy, those are delicious looking tulips, aren't they? Sure are. It's wonderful uh, cool weather, so I'm gonna take another shot here. And they last a lot longer in cool weather. So. Oh, this is a beautiful shot here. There's a pattern on the phone. Well, look at that. What do you know? That's a great idea. Look at this, guys. Impressive, don't you think? There's the uh, the the machine. The uh, what's it called? The uh... well, that lifts the. Uh, there, it's a, a movable. Uh, I guess how do you call it? A weird. They have all these. They can either uh, increase the flow, uh, limit the flow by putting um, sort of blocking off the flow of water. And right now, they're, they're getting letting it flow as fast as it can. So,
I think it's this is a war memorial. I think. Yeah, this is the for it, 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 Commonwealth Graves Commission is uh, redoing this. This was in fact uh, a, a, a memorial for the air services. I think the Confederation uh, Air Services Air yeah, Force. Yeah. Of the Air Forces of the British Commonwealth. You see, it's written. Oh there? yes. On the wall there. Right there. Yeah. There's probably a plaque here that you can get a picture of. Oh, no, it's over on the other side, but anyway. There it is. An honored memory of the men and women of the Air Force of the British Commonwealth, blah, 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 blah. blah. to get out and walk about the, uh, uh, the place, you know, after that big meal. There's the field gun up there. Yep. 75 uh, millimeter. millimeter. Yeah. Almost at 88. The 88 gun was a great gun. It was, uh, it was what the, uh, the Tiger had. Yeah, well, it was also used as an air, air uh, anti-aircraft. Uh, the uh, the difference between the Allies and the uh, the Allies and the Germans was that the Allies had an awful lot more manufacturing capabilities, so they could experiment. And if uh, they had a tank that didn't work, they could go and quickly design another one and build it. You know, and uh, the uh, the Germans didn't have the same resources. They were just sort of one country against the world, you know? So that's good. Getting some of it. What if we take a quick look at the uh, gun then? The, uh... Here's a picture of the plaque too. You see this? Yes. And give it, give it, a, give it three or four seconds so people can read it. If, it, if you do too quickly, they don't. It was called a 25 pounder, pounder artillery field gun. Yeah. So here it is. So they'd uh, they'd uh, 
they'd um, this would be pulled uh, on a truck. Uh, they'd uh, yeah, it was. Uh, they'd hitch it up. It was uh, one of the advantages of it. They could hook it up uh, very quickly onto the back of the truck, and away they could go. So they could reposition the guns very quickly. And uh, yeah, so this was. Oh, uh, they'd hook this on the back of a of a truck right here, and off they go. Yeah. And uh, because it only had one axle, they could swivel it any way very quickly and re-aim the gun. You know. I bet these are real rivets. Oh, they're... This is heavy-duty steel, there's no doubt about that. Um, this is where they put the uh, telescopic sight. Right here, there, yeah. right there. And this was used for leveling it, so they'd be able to get the platform level, and then they'd be able to get... Uh, <clears throat> they'd adjust it so that they'd be able to get the information on where exactly the position was, the coordinates of the uh, enemy, and then they would be able to then adjust these uh, different uh, wheels, uh, which are screws, They're, they won't move. Um, yes, uh, but, but and, they turn these. Yeah, they would do that, and that would uh, rotate the gun, uh, and they could also lift it up and down so to get the right elevation. And elevate it. Yeah, and uh, the right direction, the right azimuth, as they call it. So. And uh, once they do that, they'd say, fire! Yeah. Boom! Yeah, and that was the firing mechanism over here. Right here. I think this is a uh, breech-loading gun. Yes. Breech-loading means that... Yeah, uh, yeah. They uh, pull this they, and they open, open this up. And the thing would swing it down. And they'd they put, put the char... Yeah, uh, the, the shell and the... Yeah. Yes, the, the, they'd, uh, they, they'd put the uh, shell in and then they'd put the charge in. And then they'd close it up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not the charge first in the shell. They put the shell in first yeah. and they put the charge in yeah. behind it. Yeah. And uh, they had here, this is where the uh, firing mechanism was originally. This, it's all bolted off, but they had a, they'd have a, uh, a kind of a cable that would spark the, uh, Boom. the charge. Yeah. And these are the brakes, of course, to stop it from swiveling. Recoiling. Yeah. Because when this... Is, uh, uh, well, yeah, and uh, from this is, swiveling uh, yes. to stop the wheel. Once they got it positioned, they wouldn't want the wheels to move. So, um, and this was just a thin sheet of steel to prevent uh, bullets. bullets and stuff uh, yes. from hitting the gunners. For, from being shot at. Yeah. <laughs> and this was the uh, recoil mechanism. What would happen is the charge would go off and this thing would go forward so that the gun would be moving back and this would go be going the opposite direction and it offset some of the forces. So it would be, uh, you can see here, this is again the other side from the sighting mechanism. Yes, right there. Yes, the, the, the 25 pounder of gun. 25 pounder gun was the principal field piece used in the Second World War and in Korea by the Royal Canadian Artillery. Mm -hmm. so, so, so they actually uh, were used in, in the oh, Korean conflict. Oh yeah, they were. Well, this gun must have been over maybe Joe's Park. Remember they had a noontime gun that they would fire? Oh yes. I don't know if this is it or not, but it could have been. They just put in a charge and go boom. Of course, now they don't use that anymore because we use the uh, National Research Council time, time signal. signal. And uh, it's accurate to the, you know, one billion for the second, you know, every year. It's so accurate. So, okay. Besides, everybody has cell phones and, uh, you know... Clocks and... Well, the, the clocks are disappearing. Uh, next time you go into a bank, take a look around and see if you can see a clock. They've got rid of them all. Uh, oh, yes. The same with the stores and everything. Was there a clock where you worked? Um, uh, uh, the, there, there was a great big clock where I worked, yes. Okay, was it inside where the... the uh, workers were near the... No, it was, uh, it was uh, right at the front of the store. Oh my, that's one of the unusual things that they, they do. So what hours was the store open? Uh, they were open from 8 in the morning to 10 at night. Oh my. 
Did you ever work in, at night or anything? No, like no, that? no. <clears throat> you can go and get the uh, the plaque here that uh, was in French on the other side. I saw this when we were coming up this way. And put it through and here it is. Yeah. So this is a, a memorial to them. Yeah, well this was uh, bases in Canada as it says here. They trained over 137,000 Commonwealth aircrew. Uh, they were able to do it here uh, in Canada because uh, you know we had wide open spaces and we weren't uh, kind of close to where the <clears throat> raids were all the time coming across the town from the Germans. So they brought everybody over here. And, and <laughs> trained them over here and sent them uh, back over there. Yeah. Well, once they've been trained though. Yeah, exactly. Of course, the little boy comes out here and what is he interested in? Big dog. See the dog over there behind us? Yeah. Too bad it wasn't sunnier out, but you know, if we would have come by tomorrow, it would be bright blue skies and you know, but it's pretty nice. Yes, it's uh, it's it's uh, still pretty nice. Yeah, and besides, it's evening now, so you know. There's too much cloud in the west to allow us to have a, uh, a sunset. We're just on the edge of it. You can see it's clear. Oh yes. Over there. Yes. And to the west, uh, that's where there's a huge big weather system that goes all the way down into the United States. It's kind of rolling south of us. And we're on the uh, cool north side and all that hot weather that's been down in the States, they've been having very, very warm weather down on the eastern seaboard. And wet, moist, humid, terrible conditions. Kind of a, feels like over 100 degrees in a lot of, lot of days. So tomorrow, this will be gone and the warm, uh, moist air will come up. Uh, and so it'll be sunny, humid, very warm, and they're talking about 31 degrees on Tuesday. 
that's very hot. It's going to be so we will have gone in the course of two weeks from about nine or ten degrees to thirty-one degrees. There's a tour. It's got some nice footage. Hope you liked it, guys. Bye.